Hello everybody, it is Pineapple here, back with another video. Um, as always, you know, we got a new core set, and that means I get to talk about Lab again. Woohoo! Um, as you know, whenever there's a, you know, new core booster set, or a ban list, or a side set, I love to just, you know, talk Lab, um, theory crafting, my thoughts on what I'm playing, why I'm playing it, you know, the usual. Um, and Lab actually got a whole bunch of this set. Uh, it's a new format where I think, though, that Lab is much more poorly positioned, uh, specifically due to Pearly being a big unaffected Bungus who, you know, spins stuff back to the deck, uh, and draws six, which is really hard to out-resource, as well as uh, Super Happy Samurai, which is a deck that utilizes a lack of hard ones per turns, and therefore uh, can just infinitely kind of combo off to a certain extent. Uh, obviously, infinite is a exaggeration, but it is the one thing that Labyrinth really struggles with um, when you don't have a, you know, where they can end on uh, clearly in mind. Uh, that said, let's hop into the deck profile and uh, my thought process behind each card. Um, of course, we're on Three Lady. Um, Three Lady is fantastic. I really can't stress enough just how much this card does specifically in tempo variants of the build. Uh, you want to see her as much as possible. She's fantastic. Uh, of course, she is a big bungus herself to a certain degree, not nearly as much as Noir, but she is uh, huge uh, in the sense that she is a 2900 wall that you can put up to defend yourself, as well as a 3k number to beat down on. Uh, she's fantastic. Uh, I can't stress enough the ability to set normal traps out of your deck, how good that is, and while we certainly didn't get any new ones in this set, um, just we did improve our extra with some targets for punishment. Uh, moving forward, we have Lovely. Uh, Lovely is fantastic in the grind as she enables you to loop things like Dimensional Barrier, as well as, you know, your big welcomes. Uh, she lets you hand loop turn one, uh, which is really toxic, but uh, it's very funny and I love it. Uh, she also prevents you from being ashed, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's Lovely. Uh, your goal is to turbo out turn one with Temple and uh, Big Welcome, hopefully taking a card out of your opponent's hand in the process. Uh, we then have three copies of Ariana. Uh, Ariana allows you to just search a welcome uh, or a Labyrinth uh, archetypal card, which is really, really powerful, especially when you are bouncing her back to your hand uh, turn one in order to uh, head loop with uh, Lovely and add follow-up. She's just fantastic uh, and pretty much enables the entire deck. Uh, I, I can't stress enough how much uh, this card is just so unbelievable and what it does for the deck. Um, additionally, its draw effect does come up relatively consistently when she is on the field, and she also enables you to rank, make rank fours, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, we are also on for our furniture. We're on Shang and Stovey Torby. Um, so the reason we are on Stovey Torby now is uh, Chaos Angel, but additionally it allows you to make um, Underworld Goddess uh, in a format where you have a lot of people making things like Noir. Uh, if you are able to play, um, you can make Goddess because uh, Stovey Torby summons itself back instead of adding itself back to your hand, uh, which is really powerful just as an extra body to link away for Goddess. Um, they both discard themselves in another monster or card to set a Labyrinth Spell Trap directly from deck. And if a monster leaves the field by normal trap effect, they either special or add themselves to your hand, respectively. Um, these are both fantastic in enabling the grind, um, as well as just, you know, allowing you to keep getting bodies on field for things like Underworld Goddess. Um, Stovey specifically is a 2, and these uh, your ladies are 8s, which means that they make Chaos Angel, but we'll get into why he's so important later. Um, we have one copy of Wannabe. Uh, Wannabe's fantastic. Uh, I wasn't sold on the card initially. My first thought was, oh, but this could just be another trap. But the important thing is, uh, worst case scenario, in your end phase, if you draw it going first, it is just another trap. Uh, but if you're going second, it enables you to just discard it and uh, potentially e either force out something like a Baron Negate or, you know, just get a trap for free. Um, the ability to just excavate, find maybe a welcome, a big welcome, uh, just a way to rip apart boards, a strike, uh, it's just so powerful. Um, I can't stress enough how just the ability to send it from your hand to the graveyard during the end phase, excavate off the top, and just pick uh, a card to set, usually an engine piece, maybe a floodgate, whatever you need just to help rip apart boards is just so powerful and enables you to go second so much easier. Uh, one copy of Clock, it's Temple of the Kings, if you control a Labyrinth monster for normal traps. Uh, Clock is fantastic, uh, I love it, it's Searchable Temple of the Kings. Uh, you only need one, uh, it triggers... Uh, to add back to your hand or special summon itself when, you know, you discard for Stovey and Shang, uh, which means that, you know, he's also kind of a body for Goddess, which is really great. Um, it, it's fantastic. I love Clock. I, I can't believe they just gave them Searchable Temple of the Kings that recurs itself. Uh, we then have three co 
piece of Prod of Prosperity. This, of course, my builds revolve around Temple. You all know this. Um, Temple of the Kings is fantastic and raises the ceiling of Labyrinth so much. Um, and we will do anything and everything to find it. Um, since we are in a good position because uh, we only add uh, from our deck to our hand with exactly two cards, and that's Ariana and Pot of Prosperity, we're very safe from Droll, which is very prevalent in this format. Um, so, of course, we're on Prosperity since our extra deck doesn't mean a whole lot. Uh, we then have three Temple of the Kings. The entire deck is built around this card. Uh, it says you can activate a trap card the turn it was set. Every other lot card piece of text on it doesn't matter. Uh, that's the only one you have to care about. It enables you to hand the uh, during turn one. It is every turn so that during your opponent's turn you also get to activate a trap that was set this turn, meaning that traps that were set off Lady are instantly online and therefore can destroy your opponent. Um, we're on one copy of Labyrinth Labyrinth. When you're playing two copies, when you're playing two pieces of furniture, uh, this makes this so much powerful, especially with Wannabe. Uh, using Wannabe and, you know, a piece of furniture to set something like a lab, lab and then flip up a welcome and pop something and get lovely and just rip boards apart is very, very powerful. Um, just the ability to see it, especially when you have two pieces of furniture constantly recurring themselves, makes it get so much more consistent. Um, the additional pop effect is great, as well as the ability to summon a fiend monster from your hand or graveyard, you know, when you activate a non-labyrinth spell uh, trap. Um, it's funny because Chaos Angel is a fiend, meaning you can technically summon it off of Lab Lab, which is really great. We'll get into that more later. Uh, we're on three copies of Big Welcome, and as you special summon a labyrinth from your hand, deck, or grave, return a monster you control of the hand, and then while it's in the grave, you can banish it and target a fiend, or if you control a level 8 or higher fiend, you get to target some, a card your opponent controls. Uh, this card is unbelievable. Again, I can't stress enough just how broken this card is, uh, just to bounce something like an Ariana on field when you're out of resources, return it to the hand, trigger something like a Welcome in Grave, reset it, normal Ariana, grab more advantage, trigger your furniture. Uh, this card does everything. It effectively searches from deck uh, any Labyrinth monster as you can summon furniture and then immediately bounce them to your hand. You can summon Lady, bounce her to your hand. Um, just the card does everything. Uh, its graveyard effect is crazy as well. I, I can't stress enough how much I love this card. Um, just unbelievable. The only weakness it has is that it can be belled, which really sucks, but who cares? Uh, we're on two copies of Compulse. It's compulsory evacuation device. Uh, really powerful removal card. Uh, you can use it on your own monsters when you need to. Uh, it, it's Compulse. Um, I can't stress enough. It's a staple in Lab. It's a non once per turn trap that just allows you to do just about everything. Uh, we're on one copy of Destruction to Ruma Cannon. I'm honestly contemplating bumping this to two because uh, just how much I want to see it in my opener, just because Parley being everywhere, the ability to book the board is also, you know, not a downside either. Uh, just, just a fantastic card. Uh, outing unaffected monsters is more prevalent than ever, so... You know, you got to love your Durham Cannons. Uh, one Dimensional Barrier. I don't know if there's going to be a ban list, uh, but until they ban this card, I'm going to keep playing it. Um, probably your first Lady Target you're ever going to go for, because uh, it's a Lingering Floodgate that has one answer, and that's Cross Out. Uh, just just a dumb, dumb, dumb card. Uh, but it's Dimensional Barrier. you got to play it if you want to win in lab. Uh, two copies of Punishment. Uh, again, we got a new Punishment target, which is really good. Um... But it's punishment. It's, you know, pop two cards. Uh, just, just a freaking unbelievable card. I can't stress enough how much I love Dogmatic Punishment. Uh, just probably the best removal card in the game uh, at the moment. Uh, one copy of Ice Dragon's Prison. Um, Sprite is still around. I don't know what they're going to do to it, but, you know, they can make Avermax. Uh, and also Outs Dragoon. Brand, it's going to get better this format. You know, we want to be able to interact with Dragoon, even if they, you know, shuffle away the DM. But, you know, you got to have outs to these untargetable, indestructible monsters. And currently, the only real out that we have is exactly Goddess and uh, Ice Dragon. So, you know, you got to play them. Um, that said, it sucks, but you got to play them. Uh, two copies of Imperm. It's a hand trap, and it's a normal trap, meaning that Lady can set it, and it is able to interact with your opponent on their turn zero. Uh, just, just a really powerful card. Turns on Lady, turns on all these just fantastic, stupid cards. Uh, we love Imperm. Uh, one copy of Terrors of the Overroot. Uh, you know, it's another non-destruction removal, but it is targeted. Uh, it also has the potential to give your opponent something back, which I really don't like. But uh, most of the time, your goal is to set something like an Ash Blossom, set something like a Ghost Bell, set whatever, just on their field, uh, something worthless, uh, in hopes that they, you know, don't get anything out of it. Uh, we are on three copies of Welcome. Uh, Welcome is fantastic, you know, especially in a grind. Uh, being able to reset it, summon a guy from deck every turn is just really, really powerful. 
peripheral. Um, additionally, not having the bounce back cost sometimes benefits you. Sometimes you just want to get out lovely. Um, sometimes you just want to get out lady. Uh, you don't want to have to give up something, uh, especially in grindier games. So welcome's great. Um, I'm still testing this. Uh, I'm moving closer to goes into the side, but I, I do really like it in the main, especially without a ban list yet. Keshtira will still be around, especially if there isn't a ban list. Uh, Gozen also really hurts Pearly, especially if you are able to light or dark lock them. It cuts them off from either Noir or Plump, uh, respectively. And, you know, it's Gozen match. Uh, it's going to dumpster things like Keshtira, uh, especially with Branded now wanting to go into Quem and stuff. Uh, this card is even better. Uh, it gets more powerful. Just the more Branded diversifies what it's playing. Um, and it's Gozen. It's going to beat dumb rogue strategies that you aren't expecting. It's, it's Gozen match. I can't stress enough just... You know, just gatekeeping decks can be um, with Gozen. Uh, we're on three cups of Strike. Uh, this is something I've been testing, and Strike is amazing. Um, there's nothing great, no greater feeling than having the capacity to play around Ash Blossom, uh, as the deck does kind of lose Dash. Uh, that's just you know the weakness of playing a deck that's engine focused, um, whose engine you know very much relies on Ash uh, Ash Bolt effects. Um, and Strike says beat Ash. Um, additionally, being able to strike the summon of something like a Plump, or I believe you actually can strike Noir's summon, now it's, it's not technically on the field, but like, it's Strike. Um, just an unbelievable card, uh, especially in the main, especially when you can do things like Wannabe for it, like, just really, really powerful. It feels so good in the main. I, I really like Strike in the main at the moment, but that's just me personally. Uh, moving on to the extra, we have Garura. Um, Garura is just a great punishment target. It does a whole lot. Um, it's punishment. Uh, it draws a card off your punishment, you know, especially when you need to outbig things, you send Bucephalus to send Garura to draw a card, you know. It helps recur advantage. We're on two copies of Entis still. Um, it's Elder Entity Entis. It's your best form of removal. Um, but, you know, it's Entis. While it does everything, we do have a new version of Entis, and that is uh, Golden Cloud Beast Malong. Uh, Malong is literally just Entis, except uh, it bounces uh, face one face-up card to your opponent's hand. Uh, this is particularly useful for adding things like a Mirror Jade that would float. Uh, just it, it interacts in slightly different ways. Um, it's still a great card. It just does different things. I, I don't think it's going to replace Entis in any capacity, as it's only 2200, which means it's a lot smaller, so you can't send it up for things like Fenrir. Um, it's, it's just slightly worse Entis that interacts in different ways. Uh, I very much like it, though, and you definitely should be playing it, especially if you want to tech in something like an Ulti Slayer. Uh, we now have a good Ulti Slayer target for Synchro. But the biggest thing that we got from Syak is Chaos Angel. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Chaos Angel and you're wondering how you make this guy, uh, it's a tuner and a non-tuner light or dark monsters, but for its Synchro Summon, you can treat a light or dark monster you control as a tuner. Uh, this is really important since Stovey is a 2 and summons itself back, meaning you can take any of your 8s, your big girls, uh, and make them into uh, Chaos Angel. And on summon, it will target a card on the field and banish it. Um, additionally, since you're making it with darks, uh, Synchro Monsters you control can't be destroyed by battle. Um, he's also a 3500 beat stick, so he's massive. Um, just a really obnoxious card you can make, who is a fiend, which means that you can play it under Welcome Labyrinth. Um, so, essentially, this card was made for this deck. I can't see why, what else they did it for. Um, additionally, it's when it's special summoned, not when it's synchro summoned. So, if you bring it back off of Lab Lab or Big Welcome, uh, it triggers to banish again. Um, you can just rip apart boards by going, like, end phase, pitch a Stovey to set, like, Big Welcome. And then, like, you know, normal summoning Ariana to get something else. Summon out, like, lovely... Bounce, you know, Ariana, special back Stovey, pop a card, then sink away for Chaos Angel and banish another card. Just just an unbelievable card. Uh, it just does so much for ripping apart boards, going second. Um, I really can't stress enough just how dumb this card is. Um, especially because it's a dark, which means you can also play it under Gozen. Uh, just an unbelievable card. Uh, moving on to Xyz, though, as much as I have praise for Chaos Angel. Uh, we do have Zeus. It's Zeus. Um... And we have DD Wave King Caesar and uh, Deus Machinix. Uh, just a good way to make a fat Zeus uh, is these two. Uh, it gives you a format Zeus, which is, you know, able to clean up games very efficiently, especially when you're in a, you know, bad spot. But, um, yeah, 
Uh, we then have one Exiton Knight when you're really behind. I keep thinking about cutting him. He's never come up, but, you know, one day I'm going to need him. Uh, it's Exiton Knight. He's just a come-from-behind guy. Uh, one card I'm very, I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of, though, uh, and you probably will get a lot of use out of in this deck, is Dugars the Time Lord. Um, X Pearly Noir can get really freaking big, um, and when you can double attack with Dugaris on something like a Chaos Angel, um, it's just really, really good. Uh, the ability to double attack, uh, to walk over a big tower is fantastic in this format, and I really, really like, uh, just Dugaris right now. Uh, one Evil Swarm Nightmare. Uh, Nightmare doesn't come up that much, but again, since Kashdira hasn't been, you know, nuked out of the format yet, I still think you should play it, at least until that happens. At which point I'll make another video, uh, and uh, we'll talk about that then. Uh, one copy of Triumph Brigade Bucephalus number two. Um, this is your big old punishment target for big old monsters. Uh, typically, you just want to send him so you can send Garura and draw a card. You know, just recur advantage, really great. Uh, one Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Old, uh, towers, monsters are everywhere. You know, this card is a fiend, so you can play it under Welcome, and subsequently you can, you know, link away your opponent's uh, big fungus monster. One Nightmare Phoenix. Uh, some people will try to make a uh, royal decree against them. This card says don't let them. Uh, and one copy of Muckraker. Uh, with Kashtira kind of moving out of the meta, and uh, my assumption that Diablosis will be banned, I don't see how that card survives. Um, Muckraker, you only have to play one. Um, I do think you could play two, especially if Kashtira gets absolutely nuked. You could definitely cut uh, Evil Swarm Nightmare. Um, but just the ability to... Uh, bring back and link is so good, especially to out things like Denko Seka and Jinzo, since Ariana is a one card uh, copy of Muckraker, if you, assuming you have a discard. Uh, moving on to the side deck, uh, we have three copies of Gudarla, the Myst Ka Mystery Dust Kaiju. Uh, the reason for Gudarla over Gamma Seal is that you want to be able to, you know, this is basically under the assumption that Kashtira is still in the meta, and if you give them Gamma Seal, technically speaking, they can wall up um, and. Radiant is a 7. Uh, it just works out that it happens that Godala, like just kind of clicks with the deck best for the Kaiju. Um, uh, essentially, just that, uh, what is it, Pearly just makes it towers. You know, this card says don't let them. Uh, I keep going back and forth about Droll in the main, though. Uh, but I kind of like it on the side. A lot of the decks in the previous format, depending on how hard they get, don't necessarily lose to Droll. I mean, they get hurt by it, but it's not the end of the world for them. Uh, but Droll's a necessity in this format. If it's not in your main, it should be in your side. Um, it sucks we're in a Droll format, but, you know, you gotta play it. Uh, one interesting tech I have is Setup. Uh, this is for particularly grindy matchups, uh, specifically, like, uh, stuff like... I've run it... All my games against Sprite tend to be super grindy. I don't know why. It's not a necessarily a grind deck. But, um, Runic, a lot of the time, it matters a lot. If you're unfamiliar with this card, it has you target two of your Labyrinth spell traps that are banished during the graveyard except itself. Uh, shuffle them into the deck, and then if you control a fiend, you get to set non-labyrinth normal traps with different aims directly from your deck, equal to the number shuffled. Uh, it's a hard once per turn. Um, we're only playing one, so that's irrelevant. But this card is really good in the grind, because especially if you cycle through all your big welcomes and you're just out of big welcomes, you can shuffle the ones that are banished back into your deck, and then just set two normal traps from your deck, which is just so stupid. Um, just a really, really powerful like grind tool, especially because it's searchable and settable off of Stovey, Shang, and Ariana. Um, just, just a really funny card. Uh, you don't have to play this. I like it. it. It's come up at some times, and it's definitely won me games just in the grind. Uh, very funny card, not necessarily good, but uh, I do very much enjoy it. Uh, we're playing one of Pointer until they ban this card. I'm going to play it on the side. Um, it, it's super searchable, super powerful, super toxic, um, but, you know, it's a Pointer. It beats Board Breakers. Uh, one EEV, again, until they ban it, I'm going to play it. It's a dark deck with monsters with more than 2,500 attack that beats things like Evenly and uh, Lightning Storm. So, I'll play it. Uh, sp Anti-spell, um, we're moving away from things like Evenly, uh, which is why I'm not playing it, if you're wondering. Uh, with a decks that, you know, make towers and make negates, Evenly becomes a lot worse because they either keep the towers or they negate Evenly, uh, which really sucks. Um, Anti-spell means that we're moving probably closer to things like Lightning Storm and the like. And Kaijus, um, but we don't want to lose to things like uh, Duster, Thrust, um, you know, just the whole lot. So we're playing Anti Spell. Uh, it beats Sweepers, uh, except Twin and Cosmic, but you know, if they have it, they have it, you know. What, what, what can you do? 
Uh, and then, of course, three copies of Judgment. Um, it's Judgment. We're a trap deck. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very excited for Psyche. I think Labyrinth is not super well positioned, but at the same time, depending on how the ban list goes, could work out pretty nicely. Um, the new tools are very fun to play around with, and I think that the tempo build is super interesting. Uh, so with that, I'll see you guys in the next one, and I will catch you later.